DFG Science TV, Stone Age Giants, The Trail of Rocks, from portal tombs to graves and their builders. While Christoph carefully prepares the fieldwork, the archaeobotanists are already busy evaluating old finds. They mustn't make any mistakes. After all, they want to get as precise a picture as possible of the living conditions of Neolithic man and his environment. There's a lot of information to be gleaned from the soil samples taken from archaeological digs. In other words, from the ground. Stephanie Close, who has a diploma in prehistory, is conducting her research as part of the priority program at the University of Kiel and is studying soil samples from settlements that date back some 5,500 years. Her objective is to understand the food supply and eating habits of the people who lived at that time and thus gain an understanding of the living conditions that enabled them to build megalithic graves. It isn't easy to find such remains, though. Chance must have been playing into our hands back then for these plant remains to have fallen into the fire while food was being prepared or dried, or for stored food to have been burned in a house fire, but only to have been charred, instead of burning up completely so that we can still find these remains now. What can these clues from long ago tell us? That is the question that Professor Wiebke Kieleis, a junior professor at the Institute of Pre- and Proto-History in Kiel, is investigating too. By studying fruits and seeds, we are able to take a detailed look into our ancestors' houses and even right onto their plates. We can see what they ate and how they cultivated wild herbs. We find grains of corn, we find wheat seeds and wheat fruits. And from this we are able to reconstruct how people cultivated at that time. So the method of cultivation is of great interest to us. We see that there were weeds that climbed up the stalks of corn or that grew very tall and that there were others that were low-growing. That provides us with clues about the harvesting methods used, whether the ears were picked off or cut off close to the ground using some kind of machinery. Studying these plant remains can also tell us things about the spiritual lives of the people who lived back then. We can also get an insight into rituals, such as burial rituals, by studying plant remains found in the megalithic graves, because they are also often contain charred plant remains, all but in small quantities, which are sometimes very special finds. They aren't necessarily your standard fare. Often they may include very special spices or things like that, or even the remains of flowers that we would classify as grave goods. Finds of botanical material are something very special and rare. In a 10 litre sample of mud, there may just be no more than a couple of plant remains, for instance. It's hard work. This makes it all the more important to study soil samples from different sites to ensure that the findings are as comprehensive and reliable as possible. The archaeobotanist Wiebke Kierleis and the archaeologist Stephanie Close will definitely be out in the field collecting samples for their research quite often in the years ahead. This will enable them to put together a picture of the landscape and of life 5,500 years ago, bit by bit. Perhaps that will help us to understand why the people who lived in those ancient times evidently had a need for monumentalism. At the Königsgrab in Ludelsen in Saxony-Anhalt, the local flora has to give way to the archaeologists for the time being. We'll find out why in the next episode. Visit DFG Science TV for more information. Awaken the researcher within you.